This is the Food and Justice Podcast with Brenda Sanders. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Food and Justice. I am Brenda Sanders, and I'm so pleased today to have a wonderful person, one of my favorite people actually in the world, and someone who I am so, so proud to call friend, Tracy McWhorter. If you haven't heard about Tracy, and I mean, it's highly unlikely that you haven't, but if by some weird chance (laughs) you have not heard of Tracy, I am about to read Tracy's bio. So buckle up because this is like amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I need at least like maybe two, three, five minutes just for the bio alone. So y'all just just get prepared. (laughs) Tracy McQuarter is a transformative leader in the field of plant-based nutrition and Black women's health and has been helping people go vegan for more than 30 years. She's the founder of the 10 Million Black Vegan Women Movement, a groundbreaking public health intervention that uses plant-based nutrition and community building to address a preventable health crisis experienced by Black women. She is the author of Ageless Vegan and By Any Greens Necessary, the first vegan diet book for Black women, as well as the creator of the first free African-American vegan starter guide with 500,000 copies ordered. The New York Times cited her work as a key factor driving the rise in veganism among African-Americans who are the fastest growing vegan demographic at 8% as compared to 3% of the U.S. overall, according to a 2016 Pew Research study. Tracy was also a health advisor for the Black Women's Health Imperative, which was then the nation's largest health advocacy organization for African-American women and girls, a health advisor for Spelman College, the nation's top HBCU and oldest college for Black women, an adjunct professor at the University of the District of Columbia Center for Nutrition, Diet, and Health, the director of the first federally funded vegan nutrition program, the Veg Society of D.C. Eat Smart program, and the co-creator of the first vegan website by and for American, African-Americans in 1997. Tracy has a master's degree in public health nutrition from the New York University and a bachelor's degree in Black studies from Amherst College. Oh my goodness. Just, oh, I mean, like, thank you so much for taking the time out with everything else that you have going on to be here on this show today. I so appreciate it. Thank you, Brenda. It's great to be here. And even with that, all of that introduction, thank you. You are still the hardest working woman. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Well, that's so nice of you to say. And I, you know, that means a lot coming from you. So um, I want to, you know, this, this, there's so much to talk about. And, and I really wasn't sure how to like, kind of jump into it because I know your whole story like your whole story. I've just been all in your business. And uh, <laughs> so I know like the origin story, like you're basically a superhero. And so, you know, like I, I want to like jump into like the meat of it, right? The course, vegan meat of it, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so you are a best selling author and activist, a public speaker and influencer, I would dare say. What inspires you? to do the kind of work that you specifically that you engage in? Well, I'm an activist and I think like you, you know, that's, it's just my calling. Um, It's not enough that I found out about veganism uh, 35 years ago Mm. and, you know, changed the way that I eat and helped my mom and, and uh, one of my sisters it's, it's, you know, and, and friends, it's not enough, you know, because um, I understand white supremacy, systemic white supremacy, mm-hmm. and what it does in all aspects of, of our lives, um, and particularly when it comes to food and nutrition. It, so knowing that um, that is the root of why Black women experience so much when it comes to chronic disease, mm. um, it I, I it wasn't enough for me to just know and for me to change my life, right? I had to share this information with as many people as possible so that they could have the information to make a choice. So it's really, you know, I just knew from an early age that I wanted to be an activist. Really, I think from um, um, uh, middle school, 
Wow. So it just so happens, you know, and I, and I wanted to be a writer. Um, those, you know, activism and writing were just those, those two things that were always in me. And so it just happens to be that veganism is the way that I do that. Mm. So it's a calling. It's your calling. Yeah, for sure. Yes. I can totally relate to that. I, I really can relate to that. I don't really feel like I had a choice, like I had a choice, but mm-hmm. I didn't really have a choice. You know, like it, yeah. it was going to happen. Activism was going to happen. So right. I can exactly. so relate to that. I am curious to know where the original idea for 10,000 Black vegan women came from, because I was intrigued when it, <laughs> when it first came out, 10,000 Black vegan women. I was like, what, 10,000? Okay, like I, if anybody's got it, you got it. So, where did the original idea come from? Because it's so groundbreaking. Thank you. So, it was 2020. Well, really, it was 2019. Um, I had just finished the book tour for Ageless Vegan that I wrote with my mother. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a long book tour off and on for about nine months. And then I was trying to figure out what to do next. And 2020 was coming up as the 10 year anniversary of By Any Grease Necessary, my first book that you Mm, mentioned. mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do something to commemorate it. And my first thought was, can, you know, can we reissue the book, right? With a new introduction, updated information, even though the info is as evergreen, you Mm -hmm. know, but just a refresh. And the publisher said, honestly, no, because the book is still selling well. So we Mm. have no need to redo it. That's wonderful. So I was like, that's good for me and my, you know, residual, you know, my, my, um, the money that I get twice a year. Right. Um, that's great, but I still want to commemorate it in some way. You know, it's, it's great that people are still engaged with that work from 2010, but I wanted to commemorate it. And so I didn't know how to do it. And, uh, and, uh, my best friend, um, Curtis Patterson, who passed away in 2020 uh, from cancer mm. um, used to say to me when I was kind of trying to figure out what to do next, um, did you do your yoga and your meditation? Right. Wow. Basically the answer is inside of you. Yeah. And so, and so I decided um, that for 30 days, I would do what I call my sacred seven, which includes yoga, meditation, journaling, eating well, um, Mm -hmm. exercising, saying my gratitude, um, sleeping well, I may be leaving one out or or serving others. And so I did that consistently for 30 days. And at the end of those 30 days, the idea of helping a thousand women go vegan with me uh, to celebrate the 10 year anniversary, you know, 10 and a thousand, it was just, uh, you know, that was how I came up with a thousand originally, um, you know, through an online 21 day program. And then, uh, another friend of mine, uh, Susan Vicka said, Oh, you'll get a thousand in a week. Why don't you do 10,000? Wow. And so I have some really good friends who are tuned in right with, mm-hmm. with me. And, uh, first I thought that was crazy. And then I was like, <laughs> why not? Let's do it. Let's go for it. And so that's really, that's really how it, how it all started. That's how Mm. I came up with it. I mean, it is so brave. Um, And one might, one might even say audacious to, you know, to just take on a task like that. Um, You know, it, especially in the the current climate where, you know, everybody is about me, 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 and, you know, may not necessarily be open to something so new and so, you know, different from the way that they may be living. And so um, a lot of people would not be as bold, I would say, as to to have, you know, such a uh, you know, like that kind of a goal, that, that ambitious of a goal. And, and I know that you were very successful. Um, you, you got more than 10,000 black vegan, um, women or black women to go vegan. What would you attribute this enormous success to, you know, for this program? We, you're right. We got 12,000 women to sign up a week before we started the program. Mm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that, you know, this happened during COVID. I announced it in February for Black History Month. Okay. Thinking that we were going to start in May and then COVID happened, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, let's just push it back to October. It'll be all over by then. 
you know, so when we realized it wasn't, we just had this big window between February and October to really get women on board, like a long, a longer window than we had anticipated. So it was that, um, but also because of COVID, everybody was more concerned about their health, right? Mm. Mainly boosting their immune system. What can they do? What can they do? But there was this general conversation uh, an urgency around health and maintaining your health, not getting COVID, what can you do, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, and so that really contributed to it. You know, there was just this, this burst of, of um, urgency and interest in health. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I think it's really no small feat that um, 12,000 Black women decided to sign up to go vegan for 21 days with all that was going on, all the stress, stress and pressure, you know, during COVID overall, all the uncertainty, but deciding this I am going to do, I think is huge. But, um, and also because it was a community program. Mm. Um, it was, it, you know, it, it's a community building program. So that's my goal. I'm, I'm trying to create or help create, because you and so many of our friends and colleagues are doing this work and have been for decades. So, you know, I'm trying to, to help grow this community so that this becomes a norm, our norm, a center, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. It's normal to do, to eat this way. And, and uh, it makes sense. It's common sense. And so how do you, how do we get, how do we build community around women to support them and so they can maintain it? So I think that focusing on, on us doing it as a community online was part of that too. So important. That's so, so, so important. And we are going to circle back around to the community aspect of it. Um, but I just got to say, like, you are now launching the 10 million <laughs> <laughs> Black vegan women program. And I'm just at this point, I'm just in awe. Um, what, can you tell us more about that and, and how that came into being? Well, because 10,000 10, was so successful, right? Mm -hmm. Not only did we get 12,000 women to sign up, but they had phenomenal health results, right? So it was, uh, we were eating whole food plant-based, um, as part of that 21 days. And then we, we did post pre and post surveys and, and women lost weight. Some of them were able to, to, um, get off of or lower their medication. Mm -hmm. um, they felt better. They they were cooking more. Um, some of them, you know, felt fewer aches and pains. I mean, there was, um, I mean, lower their blood pressure, lower their cholesterol. There were so many health benefits that I expected, you know, if women, if the women followed the program. Um, and so I just thought at the end of it, it was a lot of work too, you know, oh, yeah. so, so much work. I was pulling like 72 hours straight, uh, 72 hours straight, just getting it all done with our small and mighty team, which I don't recommend, but you know, <laughs> I don't, I'm all about the rest and, you know, and, 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 um, you know, you can't light yourself on fire, right. To warm other people or shine a light for other people. I know mm. that for sure now. Mm. Um, but, but there was so much work and so much energy and passion for me also in doing it that I wanted to expand it. Right. And so mm. I thought, um, the, the success of the program and, and all that I put into it, you know, there's so many more women that I can reach. And also, um, as you said, in the introduction, I've been doing this work for more than 30 years. So I'll be 56 and I'm thinking maybe I'll give it another 10 years of a hundred percent. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll always be doing this work. I would, you know, cause it's my passion, but as a profession, I thought if I give it, if I really give it a, a good, hard, uh, another 10 years, what do I really want to see? What do I really want to do? And I want to create an institution that outlives me, right? Yes. That continues to help Black women go vegan, mm. continues to give them support in, in multiple ways to do it. So um, that's how, so I was thinking about something big and broad um, and bold, bolder to do. And so I came up with a million Black vegan women, helping a million Black women go vegan in 10 years. The same friend Susan <laughs> said, "Oh, you'll get that in a year. Why don't you do ten million? 
that's crazy. <laughs> and then I was like, but, but that's worthy of it, you know? Yes. So I, you know, I give, you know, that's where community is so important, right? So I have friends who are saying, you can do that. You'll get that. Yeah. Do more, you know, and sometimes yourself, you don't see yourself as in that, right? Until somebody affirms that for you. Mm. And, you know, no matter how long you've been doing it, right, you still need that. Um, and so I was like, yeah, that sounds absolutely insane, but let's do it. <laughs> And you're doing it. Let's you are doing it. it. Oh and my God. And we don't need to reach the 10 million right away. You know, I mean, the goal is a million a year over 10 years, but once we reach our first million, it's going to grow exponentially. Oh, yes. Because we tell people, we encourage people, right? We so we're, you know, and it's going to out it's going to outlive me. I mean, you know, once I hand over the reins after 10 years to, you know, the next group the next team to take this on it's going to just continue so absolutely absolutely yeah. I'm so excited I, I literally cannot stop talking about this program um and so I I just and I'm actually gonna be like a part of it I'm so like psyched about that like I'm just so excited because yeah. it's so important this is such important work Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm glad. I mean, you are definitely, we're, we're going to be talking very soon. You're going to be talking to our community. Um, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And sharing all of your wisdom. So I'm excited about that. And it's, comp, you know, we're complimenting, we're complimenting each other's work. Absolutely. And I think it's important for people to see that community, you know, that exists. There's mm. so many resources and uh, activists out here um, that, they can tap into. Absolutely. And I mean, let, let's just, we're going to put a pin in that, that word community, because, you know, right now there are actually folks who are trying to make the case that community-based activism isn't as valuable as more like corporate, you know, aimed stuff or, you know, that kind of thing. And I, am just like the folks like you folks like me we are here to prove that like especially for certain communities you know for certain demographics of people community based activism is everything it is like the way to reach people so we going we going to circle back around to that but before we go there i wanted to say first and foremost that black women have always been trendsetters. Like for my whole life, as, as long as I can remember, like, you know, my mom and like all her friends with the Afros. I mean, like we have always been trendsetters. And so for a program, Black women specifically have always been trendsetters. And mm -hmm. for a program that like yours, that is helping a million Black women to go vegan every year, like what do you feel like is the potential of a program like yours? The potential is huge again because we tell we are we tell everyone right what we're doing. We share the good news. We share what we're doing, uh, what we've tried. We're still the the folks in our families who are cooking the most. We're responsible for the health of our family members, and we um, we serve other people. You know, we're the ones who give money, give time, give resources, give advice. So tapping into black women is enough, right? That alone is enough. In addition uh, yes. to that, yes. we are going to share it with everyone. So it's gonna change our communities, change uh, society and change the world because it's a global movement, right? Um, and we are, you know, linking hands with other organizations that are already doing the work, right? right. So um, the potential is just, it, it's, it's huge, it's limitless. And um, that's why I, you know, I'm, I'm able to conceive that, um, you know, we will reach this 10 million ultimately. And, and um, it's just, a, you know, it's a, it's a worthy it's a worthy goal to have, and it's an attainable goal, no matter how long it takes. Um, but just focusing on Black women is enough um, to center us, and we will reach everyone else. Mm. And it's so true. 
It's just so true. You know, starting an organization called Afro Vegan Society um, and having as our symbol, you know, uh, a bust of a black woman, yeah. there were there were so many people who had concerns, you know, <laughs> uh, there were some guys who were just like, so is this just for black women? Like, are, are, are men just excluded, you know? And it's like, no, it's not about exclusion. It's about platforming. Mm -hmm. You know, we are using our platforms to like signal boost this mm -hmm. important information and to put, you know, these important people with these important messages mm -hmm. out there. And, you know, and, and it's just like, it's like you said, limitless. I know that, you know, that other people, you know, our colleagues and friends, they know that. I mean, your friends are just telling you like, you know, no, you shoot higher. You got this, mm -hmm. you know, because it just, we just know that the sky is the limit and even further for right. the work that we're doing. And we're the face of, we're the current face of veganism, black women, right? Like this, this 2016 Q Research Center survey, that's the latest info that we have, right? Mm -hmm. That actually surveyed folks to find out who is vegan and who is vegetarian. And 8% of black folks are vegan and vegetarian. And mm. it's estimated that the majority of those black folks are women. Wow. Um, so we are the face of veganism and that is not, that's nothing new. The vegetarian resource group has been doing these surveys for decades. Black mm -hmm. folks have always been twice as likely to be vegan than any other demographic in the country. So this isn't new for folks who've been doing this for a minute, right? Um, it, it just is, you know, it's just growing at, in the same trajectory and mm -hmm. we've always been innovators in this in this movement. So um, that's the other reason why, you know, I'm just continuing this tradition. I'm just like one in that number, you know, I'm not, so I don't, you know, it's okay to center black women, period, full stop. Mm -hmm. And that's all we got to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you're, you're so right about us being at the forefront. And it's, it's very strange because when you go into these mainstream vegan circles, that is not the message that you get that like black folks have been at the forefront of like this vegan movement for like decades, like for quite some time. I mean, I was introduced to veganism from black folks. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I started being around like white animal rights activists that I found out that apparently black people aren't vegan because <laughs> that was never my experience my experience right. was that it was black people that were vegan and I found out about the white folks in the animal rights movement later same right <laughs> so the like, same with me. we've been in this we've yeah. been in this and we've been doing this food and justice is made possible with support from defund big meat a grassroots effort to encourage strategic collaboration across all sectors of global justice. Find more information about Defund Big Meat at defundbigmeat.org. A Well-Fed World, an international hunger relief and food justice organization advancing plant-based foods and farming to create a nourished and climate-friendly future. Find out more about A Well-Fed World at awfw.org. Better Food Foundation, an organization that promotes dietary changes to build a healthy, equitable, humane, and environmentally sustainable food system. You can find out more about Better Food Foundation at betterfoodfoundation.org. And Farm Sanctuary, a farmed animal sanctuary working to fight the disastrous effects of animal agriculture on animals, the environment, social justice, and public health through rescue, education, and advocacy. Find out more about Farm Sanctuary at farmsanctuary.org. So I want to go back to this um, idea of community because when I first started out doing this work um, about 12 years ago now, um, I was just like, I have to go back to where I'm from, like what I know, right? So I was like, I'm going to go to the furthest margins of the black you know of black society and people told me like oh no 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 you should not do that like you know that is not gonna work because you know those folks and and this was like you know 
like other black folks, Mm -hmm. you know, who were like colleagues who were worried about me. They were like, they don't care. You know, (laughs) like they don't care about their health. Look how they eat. They don't care about the environment. Look how they live, you know, and all these things just to try to warn me. And I'm stubborn. You know, so I was just kind of like, well, you might be right, but I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, I went to communities that didn't have access to this information at all. Like, you know, folks weren't just bringing information about this, you know, way of eating plant foods and, you know, being more, having a more sustainable lifestyle and considering the other creatures on the planet, like all these different things. Um, This information just wasn't there in these environments. And folks are just trying to survive. Like they're trying to survive from day to day. They're not, you know, going on Google to find out, you know, what the carbon footprint of whatever food is that they just ate. They're trying to live. So it was just like, that's where I'm going. That's what I know. You know, when I was growing up, when you turn 40, you had high blood pressure. When you turn 50, you were pre-diabetic. You know, by the time you were 60, you had your first heart attack. So like that was normal. That was completely normal. And, and, and so I wanted to do something about that because I had been benefiting, you know, for so long from just eating plant foods and, and living my life in a certain way. And I thought, just like you, like, well, I have to do something, obviously, like, I have to be a part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to go back to who I know and what I know and and try to to make this difference. And and it was all about community. It was all about connecting, networking, building a community. So then hearing again, within, you know, the, the vegan movement that community-based activism it just doesn't reach enough people it's not worth the time and the money like hearing these things it was just like well that's not my experience because Mm -hmm. like literally thousands and thousands of people have gone through my program gone through my workshops my classes and 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 come back with these amazing stories of like coming off of their medications and you know these different ailments going away completely and just all these success stories that I know you've heard as well and uh, you know so it just hasn't been my experience and so I wanted to ask you what is the importance that you put on the community part of community-based activism well first let me say thank you for just giving yourself your flowers because (laughs) you should um it's so so important to you know I to, to 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 talk about the success and to remember that and to remind people like, you know, period. Um, So if for me, I learned through black community too, right? So when I, um, not to, not to tell my whole, my retell my story, because we've talked about it um, before on your podcast, but the, the, there was a large black vegan community in DC already that had existed since at least the 1960s. So I, once I learned about veganism in 86, I found out that this community existed. And my point is that they had the first and only 100% vegan establishments in the city, in Washington, DC, in the nation's capital, starting in the seventies, right? Mm. There were at least 13 of them in a, in, in the eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and they were in low income black neighborhoods. So, uh, so vegetarian, right. Yes. Was, was until recently the largest vegan chain in the world, mm-hmm. um, doing soul food, like doing veganized soul food, right. Black mm-hmm. folks food veganized. Yeah. So, um, this notion that it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work in the community or it doesn't exist. It can't exist in the community. Um, you can't build in the community. It's just false because mm-hmm. we have the evidence yep. that has got, that goes back decades. And a lot of these white activists who are, you know, in our age group learned from these folks, right? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. They learned from them. And had we been given the funding, um, from jump when we when we were innovating this the the entire movement in the entire animal rights movement the entire vegan movement would be so much further along right yes I, absolutely it would, be, it would be literally 30 years ahead of where it is right now mm. had 
we been given this funding, but we uh -huh. were doing the work anyway, yeah. right? We're doing yeah. the work anyway. Um, but it's it's to doing this community work anyway, and this is where the innovative ideas come from, right? It's to the movements, um, it's the movements loss, right? That they did not um, re that they that they did not turn these resources toward us, and it's their loss that they aren't doing it now mm -hmm. in larger numbers. I Absolutely. mean, maybe more since 2020 when the state killed George Floyd, right? Mm -hmm. But before mm -hmm. that. And still uh, that's tapering off. So it's to the movement's loss that they are not actually centering our community building work. Mm. That's my take on it. There is, you know, the, the, the stream that I swim in is the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a word. That's yeah. a, I, I just kind of want to sit with that for a second <laughs> because, you know, because not enough people are making this point. It is, it is such an important point. Like the, the, the resources have to make their way to us. I just recently had a wonderful professor uh, working out of Morgan State University here in Baltimore who just stumbled across me and, and my work. And, you know, she works in, um, in, in public health and, you know, had, had discovered um, uh, uh, plant-based eating and, you know, was incorporating all, all these things into her public health analysis and, you know, specifically around the health disparities mm -hmm. that exist uh, within our community and the fact that it is on purpose, mm -hmm. like, like these health disparities aren't by mistake, you right. know, like it's built into the system, um, you know, this, this racist food system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she stumbled across my work and she's like, do you know how much money, just grant money that comes through universities alone? Like this money should be going towards the kinds of programming that mm -hmm. you are doing. And it was so refreshing. It was, it was beautiful, you know, for to have somebody outside the vegan movement, right. you know, who just could see the importance and, and, you know, the effectiveness of the kind of activism that we're doing and knowing that like, you know, she's going to be in our corner, you know, activists like me, activists like you, other folks, like we about to start uh, uh, channeling some of this funding into the work that we're doing. Um, and so that's exciting, but I mean, not enough people are talking about this issue. So thank you so much. Yeah, that's very exciting, Brenda. That's fantastic. And, you know, um, just want just to amen that the the medical industry, the medical establishment is not having success, is not having the success, right? Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to these chronic diseases, um, particularly when it comes to black folks, right? Right, right. So, you know, it is not to be taken lightly that thousands of people are going through your program, are going through my program and having success, even just joining the program, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And initiating it when they're, when the medical industry cannot, ha cannot accomplish that, right? So they need to look to us to find out what we are doing, how we are successful mm. and what, you know, what, what work, what is the work that they, that they can learn from what lessons they can take from that. So it is, we should center ourselves and our work in this whole conversation about public health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I want to ask you, um, and, and there, this may be a, you know, this question may have multiple, um, answers, but, I am really curious as to, for you, what is the most gratifying aspect of you? I'm going to tell you mine real quick. Okay. Um, for me, it's when I hear the success stories, mm -hmm. um, you know, because sometimes I get so like tunnel vision mm -hmm. um, that I'm just like, what's work, the, the work, the work, you know, what's next? I can do, 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 do this, you know, and that those testimonials, just kind of slow me down for a second mm -hmm. and give me a moment to like, remember that I like, my goal is to, to have an impact and, um, and to just like pass this, this blessing along that was, was passed on to me. Um, and so that's the most gratifying thing for me. What would you say is the most gratifying part of your work? 
Thank you for sharing that. I, I felt the chills from you. <laughs> um, so I have two and, and one of those is the same as yours. Exactly. You, you, you know, I have tunnel vision a lot of times, just focus, focus, focus. And then if I'm out and about or I get an email or something or at a festival and someone comes up to me and talks about, you know, that they did the program or they read my book or they, you know, they or since the program, you know, mm -hmm. this has happened to them or it's changed their lives, that kind of thing. We hear that all the time, right? Yes. Um, and it and it does make you pause and remember. And sometimes, you know, it does make me cry. Yeah. Um, because this is this is the this is what we wanted to happen. And and um, you know, we're we're of service, you know, as a, a small part of, of folks' lives to help them make this change. Mm -hmm. So absolutely it 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 does all of that for me. It centers me, it makes it re-energizes me, re-inspires me, mm -hmm. affirms the work. So yes, that's number one. And and really quickly, number two. I have to say, um, in thinking about this question, um, for me, it's that I was I I um, was able and am able to create a livelihood and a life for myself mm. out of my activism, mm. right? Choosing this path um, not as a in the way that I chose it, so not as somebody who's there are there there are a lot of ways that we can do this work, right? So they're, and they're all good, all needed, all necessary, all yeah. good ways. The way that I'm choosing to do it um, as an activist um, now through a nonprofit is, um, you know, is, is kind of like lay, I'm, I'm building the path and laying the bricks, you know, yes. sprinkling the, the gravel as I walk. And um, just deciding at an early age that this is what I wanted to do this is the activism work I wanted to do. This is the way that I wanted to do it. And then figuring it out, you know, these are the books that I wanted to write and being able to create a beautiful life for myself through all the ups and downs of mm. it, right? All the pain and the agony, the bittersweetness of it, mm -hmm. the beauty and the joy of it. Um, you know, this is not the path that I that I thought, you know, would, you know, I thought I was gonna be a judge or an investigative reporter a novelist. Wow. Yeah. Like all of, no like idea. all of these things. And, and, um, before I changed careers, I was a museum director. I thought I was going to be the youngest director of, of the museum of modern art or, or, you know, the studio museum, something like that. And then I decided to pursue veganism and not just, you know, volunteer, but to actually go back to school for it. So hmm. just being able to, just being able to look back after 35 years and say, look at this, life that I have, this path that I followed and, and how it's worked out, mm. you know, and it's been beautiful. So that's gratifying for me too. I'm so inspired right now. <laughs> I really am. I, I still sometimes have my moments where I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is not like, you know, the, the normal route to, you know, building, building a life, but it it's, there's nothing else I would rather be doing. Absolutely nothing. So I can so relate. And I mean, honestly, you're living my best life. So, um, so I'm trying, <laughs> you really are. I was just like, <laughs> I cannot wait. I cannot wait to be like, you know, because you're just such an inspiration literally to everybody. I say your name and people are like, Oh yeah, Tracy, you know, like, uh, I mean, they really are. I'm, I'm, I'm not just blowing smoke. I mean, you are such an inspiration to, and, and like you were saying to mainstream folks. Right. So like some people kind of know who I am and, you know, in certain circles, but the fact that you have been able to move into these mainstream spaces and to bring this information into main, like boldly, you know, because I'm not going to name any names, but there are a few of our colleagues that have kind of backed away from the vegan thing as they became more mainstream. And it was kind of a disappointment to me. Um, I understand the pressure, mm -hmm. you know, to do that, to be more mainstream, you know, mm -hmm. but the boldness that it takes to be like, I'm going mainstream and I'm bringing this message and you're going to accept this message from me because it's important. 
um, that's just such an inspiration. And I'm you know, every day, every day, I'm just like, yes, you know, this is what we need to be doing. So. Uh, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it, Brenda. I really do. Um, I, you know, I, I think that, um, uh, I just want to say to that, you know, there, you've experienced this. I know they're, they're, they're after the police killed Michael Brown and then the police killed, you know, and that was years, 2016, I think. Mm. I'm getting the date right. And then in 2020, you know, there, there were these spurts of, of, of white organizations, white vegan organizations rushing to, to, you know, reach black audiences. Right. Absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, my, so I got a lot of that. A lot of us did. And so my thing was, um, you know, we're going to have a conversation. I'm, I'm going to vet you. And uh, I'm going to decide what I might want to do in, in the way that I want to do it. And I'm going to have total control over it. Mm. If you aren't on board, well, see ya. Mm. You know? Because I didn't need it. Right. Um, this is for, this is, they needed that, right? They wanted that and they should Absolutely. You know, be reaching, be reaching um, these audiences, you know, that they more, you know, more than white audiences. But um, if they came to me, they were doing it the way that I wanted to do it or they, or we weren't doing it. And yes. so I was always, and that's just, um, you know, that's just because I'm centering black folks. And a lot of these organizations are, you know, always trying to talk about lack and deficiency. Right. And I'm like, no, we're going to talk about history and legacy centeredness and abundance mm. that's where we're coming from. Mm. No other way are we doing it? And some yes. were not on board, but some were, you know, and so those were the organizations that I, that, um, you know, just a few like that I chose to work with. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I went to white schools, white elite institutions all my life. So I'm kind of used to this, you know, yeah. spaces. And I just decided at a point I'm centering myself and I'm not explaining stuff to white folks. That's just <laughs> I'm not I, that's not what I'm here for. That's I not what I'm it. doing. I center myself and black folks and black women in partic particular. Yeah. Yeah. If you were if you want to work with me, this is what you're going to do too. This mm. end of story. End of story. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. I mean, like and 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 the thing is, like some of those organizations thought they wanted to bring black people into their space and then they figured out. <laughs> before too long oh maybe we didn't right. you know because like unapologetically black folks yeah you know what I mean yeah. black folks who know that we have gotten a raw deal who know that we're getting the short end of the stick and we are demanding that things change mm -hmm. see that's a whole different story that's right. a whole different kind of black folks right. and um and like you said if you're not on board with that particular mission then we aren't compatible Exactly. And I feel the exact same way. So and I and I I also may know of some of these amazing um, organizations that are on board mm -hmm. and who do support us and our work. And so I wanted to, without being too specific, say shout out to y'all. You know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know who we talking about. <laughs> yeah, they do. Absolutely. And, and we do appreciate that. Um. <clears throat> So now, um, you know, broadening things out a bit to the global challenges, which are many, mm -hmm. um, even more so lately. I don't know what's going on, uh, but <laughs> this is a, there's a lot going on right now uh, at this point in, in the timeline. Um, uh, how do you see a program like 10 Million Black Vegan Women helping to address some of this variety of global issues? and challenges that we're dealing with right now? Yeah, so um, it's, a, you know, it's a specific focus on, on food and nutrition, but it touches, I mean, the way that I enter it, right, as a public health nutritionist, mm -hmm. it obviously touches so many things. So it, it touches um, global warming and climate change. It touches food justice, mm. not just touch, but, you know, it's, it's directly linked to, it's interconnected with. Yes. Um, uh, animal rights. Um, um, uh, health equity. Mm -hmm. So that is the, that is the beauty of having, of working as an activist through the lens of veganism, because it, it intersects all of these issues. Right. Yeah. And so, um, 
and you can take and you can do it in stages. So if however you enter, you can bring in all of these other aspects because they're all interrelated. So for yeah. me, it's already, you know, it's already broad and interconnected. And a lot of people, you know, will enter through one specific thing, but ultimately, you know, as an activist, uh, for me, I want to talk about all of these issues, right? Mm -hmm. Bring yeah. experts in to talk about these issues, have resources available, information, so that people can go as in, as in depth as they want, mm -hmm. you know, and be introduced to all of these aspects. So just, just on default, it's a global, you know, veganism, promoting veganism touches, um, touches all of these aspects. It's a global issue and it's a global movement. And, um, yeah, you know, so I think that um, it, it automatically does that if you are not single issue with it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And that's so important. And that's what's so important about a program, a comprehensive program like yours, is that you're going to be touching on all the different things. You're going to be exploring different aspects. And, you know, and that's what people need. They need the whole picture. Yeah. And that's the thing. And and when we when when we are just uh, focused on a, a particular um, issue, sometimes things do get lost or people don't understand like the real importance, like the real vitalness of of what it is, you know, that you're presenting to them because they think, oh, it's just my health. It'll be fine. Right. You know, or oh, it's just, you know, like the environmental stuff but you know it, the rest is fine no it's all of it I, I don't know people need to see this work for what it is and how like it is we're at the cutting edge of like some groundbreaking work like mm -hmm. stuff that has not yet been accomplished you know what I mean like we're not just you know recreating the wheel we're creating new shapes you know <laughs> and, right. and and that's like that's different it's different and 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 it needs to be recognized for what it is the food and justice podcast is proud to be organizational partners with afro vegan society Food Empowerment Project, Grow Where You Are, and Vine Sanctuary. So I'm so glad that we're able to, to talk about these things on this show. We're going to talk about it on your, you know, in your program and, and we're just going to keep talking about it. Yeah, absolutely. And again, there's, I mean, the beauty of your show, your podcast is bringing these issues together, right? Um, food and social justice, veganism and justice. And yes. there's so many folks, you know, um, Af and Syl and um, Milton, um, um, Breeze. Breeze. <laughs> I was going to say Breeze. So many people taking you know, making these connections and just the brilliant minds, you mm. know, that are that are thinking about these issues. It really, really is. It's beautiful and important and, you know, current, historic and futuristic. There's just so it's there's so much there. Right. Mm. That yeah. I, was, I, you know, thank God there's so many people doing this work because, you know, you can just bring in experts. You don't have yourself have to be the expert in the thing. In I'll all tell the you what, <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah. There's so much depth and richness and, and, in, in the, in uh, these connections. So yeah, Absolutely. great. My goodness. So, so I want people to, um, I want, I want this show to uh, be sort of, um, a, a way for people to not only find out about the 10 million black vegan women uh, program movement, mm -hmm. um, but to also go there and sign up um, to also tell their friends about it, tell their family members about it, tell their coworkers about it so that they can come and sign up as well. So, so uh, where do people go? How do people find out more? So the website is 10 million black vegan women.org. 10 million black vegan women .org. Uh, on social media we're uh, 10 the number 10 MBBW for 10 million black vegan women um, and uh, 10 million black vegan women .org is where you can go to sign up where you can go to get black uh, health black women's health stats 
why we need to do this, mm. um, information about studies that have been done on black vegans and vegetarians, um, and just more results from the women who, the 20,000 women who've already gone through the program since, um, since we started. Mm -hmm. And um, our next program, our next free 21 day program starts September 18th. So folks can sign up now and get started and start getting emails about it and get, um, get ready for that. But I also just wanted to share really quickly that our, the, our introductory program is the free 21 day program, the free 21 day vegan fresh start. We're also going to have a six week transition program. Uh -oh. And that is going to be a full curriculum for women to go from the introduction to all this interconnectedness that we've talked about to get to go in deep, in depth, get deeper into um, these various aspects of, of living a vegan lifestyle and how to transition. And then we're going to have an ongoing coaching program um, coached by Black women vegan um, health professionals mm. so that women who take the program and want to go vegan and maintain it can get coaching um, on that. And we're also going to have a certification program that includes continuing education credits so that we can train health professionals in how to teach people to go vegan in the way that we do it. And it also creates a pool of black women, vegan professional health professionals that we can then hire to be coaches in our group coaching program. So, um, and then we're gonna have in-person, Those are, that's all online. And then we're also gonna have in-person um, retreats and, and activities. So, <laughs> You know, we've got this 10 year strategy, this 10 year plan. So I just wanted folks to to know that there that there are levels to this um, and but you, they can get started with our free 21 day program at 10 million black vegan women dot org. Mm. I'm so excited. I, I heard the word retreat and then my brain just <laughs> shut off. So because <laughs> I need to retreat. Tracy. Yeah. I we both do. I'm like, <laughs> when is this happening? When are we starting this? Oh yes. God. So yeah. please keep me posted on Absolutely. that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm so excited. And I mean, Tracy McCorder, thank you so, so, so much. I'm so thankful. I know, like, I know how busy you are. If there is anybody on this planet who knows how busy you are, especially right now, it's me. And so I am so thankful that you took the time to come on the show to talk about your amazing program, your amazing movement. And I am sure that everybody tuning in is just as excited as I am. So thank you so much. Thank you, Brenda. It's always, always such a thrill to talk to you. You are the hardest working woman. <laughs> in so yes, you know how much, how much is involved in all of this. So thank you. And um, just thank you for all of your support and all of the work that you are doing um, onward and upward. Yes, yes, I love that onward and upward. And thank you so much, everyone for tuning into this amazing program. And you know, you're all I know, so very inspired. So get on over to the 10 million black vegan women uh, website and get signed up and tell somebody. Thanks again. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to food and justice with Brenda Sanders. See you next time.